You know, I watched some news reporting last week from our, some of our local channels and they said, you know, the party's over, that the real estate bubble is, is about to break and that because of oil prices, that uh, the market's going to go down. And, you know, I was very shocked by some of this reporting because I know our inventory, I know a little bit of what's happening and I'm going to share some data with you here and I want you to decide and see what you think uh, about what's happening in our local market and what may happen in 2015. Okay, so when we look at uh, where we're at with last year, in, end of December, or mid, we reached a listing high of 51.75. This year, we're at 62.09, so 1,000 listings more. But that's not really negative news compared to where we've bat, been at in the last few years. Now, think about this. The average sold price was 466 in uh, December of last year, and it hasn't changed. It's 465. That's, that's a non-change. $1,000 is a non-change. Okay, but let me tell you, let me show you another little bit of information to realize. Okay, so what I want to do with you is give you a little history and tell you why I feel that the market is where we're at in the cycle is far different than where people think they are. Now, first of all, you have to go back. We'll do a little history. And what you have to remember is, is that back in the year 2000, we had about a million people. We had about 5,000 listings and we actually had a hot market. And that was in the year 2000. We had competing offers and so forth. And at that time, we would we actually allowed assumable mortgages. And I actually saw people with mortgages at seven and a half and eight and a half percent. So, and we actually at that time had 25 year amortizations. So, in response to that hot market, builders and developers they went to, went ahead and put in plans and development plans to build new homes because there was an undersupply in 2000. So, we got up all the way up to uh, 2004, 77, 84 listings, and we actually were oversupplied at that time. Most people don't rem remember that between 2003 and late 2005, the market wasn't good. There was no indications that 2006 was, 2006 was even going to happen. So um, starting in 2006, like the first months of 2006, in January, December, we had 5,500 listings. And uh, you all saw and remember if you were here, what happened, we actually overnight, we've gone in the two, in, up until that point, we had been going from somewhere around uh, $180,000 average sale price. And in 2006 and, and later, we've, we've climbed to almost or more than double uh, those prices. So in 2006, we had this crazy, crazy market. And then in response to that hot market, builders and developers, by 2008, just in time for the market crash, we had 14,960 listings. It's just a record high number of listings. And then uh, in 2009, people actually pulled their homes off the market. They actually didn't sell because the market didn't show that the sales were there. They, they, We had some light at the end of the tunnel, so people started putting their homes on the market in 2010. And we've been working away reducing that inventory supply ever since. So in 2003, we actually started off the year somewhere around 2013, sorry. We started off our market somewhere around 5,500 listings around that number. I knew we were in for a hot market because, wow, that's a low amount of listings. It looks like 2006, right? In 2014, uh, we started off with, again, somewhere around the 6,000 listing mark or 5,500 listing mark. So not much changed then. And we saw that we had a great market. And we actually, between 2013, we had high listing numbers of 94.56 and in uh, in May and 9,000 in 2014, 9,074. Those were our high listing months, the highest number of listings we had. Now, the reason why I think this is so much different than in the past, and that 6,209 listings at the end of December as a high is not a high number is because we're sitting at 1.48 million people, almost 1.5 million people. So we are in a much different situation than we were when we looked at 1.18 million people in 2006. Right now, a hot market for us, a really hot market for us, is more like 7,000 listings. So that's a really hot market, and we all saw that 9,000 listings, you know, seem to be a pretty fast and hot market. So. I don't think that when they say that 6,200 listings or the where we're at now compared to where we're at in 06, I don't see that as being oversupplied at all. Now, the big thing everyone says is, what about the new inventory that's going to come out on the market? Well, let's just have a look at that. Now, so in 2006, this is housing starts. 
2006 was an all-time high for housing starts and for condos. And look at what's happened in 2014. Look at how that green line, that single family. So we're going to see in, in, we've actually had fairly low numbers compared to what we had in 06. And think about the population we just talked about, how much the population has actually increased from 2006. So we actually haven't had a lot of overdevelopment in the plans. Uh, for 2014, we're actually for 2015. We're not looking for a lot of new inventory compared to what happened in 06. But I think we've learned something from that there. But you will see that our multifamily, meaning the condominiums, that type of those type of uh, properties, that may be an oversupply situation going into 2015. Okay, so let's talk about the uh, amount of people that are moving into this province, and let's just this is actually. Uh, the Calgary um, spreadsheet, stats spreadsheet. And what they're looking at here, and you say this is projected. So where we're at right now in 2014, going into 2015, uh, uh, 1.458 million people, that's what we have. Now they're looking at an increase. Now keep something in mind that when we talk about migration into this province, we're talking about immigration. Now immigration is like a six month to a year process. People that are immigrating are immigrating. They didn't, uh, a lot of times they didn't come here just for the job. They came here because they're coming to Canada. Now, I just heard from one of my clients on, uh, that has, uh, is applying for his permanent resident status that, uh, he told me that it's taking longer because they're changing and easing up the, uh, immigration rules so to make it easier for people to come to our, to our country. So that's something that Harper's doing right now. And, uh, they're actually don't even know how long it's going to take. They're, they're saying that the, the the process may be fast tracked. So with increased immigration, we may see these numbers actually improve in light of the fact that the oil prices are going down. It may have oil prices may have nothing to do with what actually happens. Okay, let's talk about interest rates because that really creates a lot of demand. Influx of people and lower interest rates. And remember, not everybody works in the oil business. So there's a factor here. When I first started in real estate back in the year 2000, we had interest rates as high as seven and a half. I saw people with eight and a half percent interest rates. As we've reduced the interest rates, the property values have doubled. Back then, the average sale price was somewhere around 180,000, 200,000 was the prices that we saw before 2006. So now we're sitting down at, at rates that are incredibly low. And what is the, what is the Bank of Canada saying? They're saying they're going to cut the rates again. So they're going to cut the rates and that's going to, expand the money supply and increase the value of the of the homes directly because as you can realize as we lower the interest rate um it act, people have more people have access to more money and this also causes the house prices to rise interest rates almost directly cause the home prices to rise so we're led to believe a lot of the time that that uh that all these other factors make a big difference but when you expand the money supply and you decrease the cost of it, people then qualify to buy more expensive homes or it actually raises the prices of the existing homes. So I think you're going to see that our market isn't going to be quite as doom and gloom as, you, as, what, we're, as what they're saying, mainly because, as you can realize, we're not oversupplied with homes. We don't have a whole bunch of new inventory coming. And let's just look at some more information to back that up. So this is the Charter Bank Administered Interest Rates Conventional Mortgage Just One Year. Okay, so it means if you took a three or a five year, you weren't getting in 2000, you weren't getting 7.6%, 7.7. You're getting about 8.5% or higher. Some of these rates are above 8%. So when we look historically at just what's happened, and in 2003, we had uh, 4.9, 2005, we had 4.8, these kind of numbers, and 2.6, 5.8 actually jumped up in 06. But uh, we can see that the market from speculators just and with the inventory supply, uh, lack of inventory in 06, it just went crazy. Now, when we look at where we're at now, look at where we're at now for interest rates, 3%. If you don't think that that is doubled the price of homes, you got to be not understanding this. The increase in the available uh, money supply or making the money cheap, cheaper to get has doubled our home prices. And that's the biggest factor is interest rates. Okay, so one of the most important factors you can think about is not price, the average sold price. And the reason why I say that is because 
it may only mean that people are buying more expensive homes. When I look at stats, I always look at the average price per square foot. And the reason why I do that is because it tells me if people are paying more per square foot for their homes. The average is when you look at them, if, if two or three $4 million or $2 million homes sell in a neighborhood or a community, those raise the averages up. So the average number quite often is actually a meaningless number. Okay, so this is where most reports get it wrong. And they're looking at everything from an overall picture, and it's really hard to paint an overall picture because you're going to look at different communities, different areas, and see what's happening where and at what price group. Because last year, it was a mixed market, meaning that on the high-end group, it was a tough market for the high-end sellers. Actually, all the action was below four, below 550 in most neighborhoods. And you can see it right here. This is what happened in the Northwest, even just in December. We actually had up to 500. We actually had 41 sales for single-family homes in the area of demises, the Northwest, and 52 available. That's pretty close race, pretty close race all the way below that. In the Southwest, look at this, three homes available, three homes sold. If you're trying to buy in a market where there's only a few homes to buy, sometimes the sales are dictated upon what's available. And there's not much available in the lower price groups. Of course, in the high price groups, two sales and 32 available above 1.5 million. Yes, those people were already experiencing a tough market. And look at all these areas down south. Um, we're talking about Cranston and these areas. Look at Look at what's happening in those different price groups. When you come under 550, you've got uh, you know a little bit more available than sold in December, and we actually have uh, under 400. We have more sales than we uh, we had available, and under 350, it was quite a bit of a seller's market there. So we're going to see different neighborhoods that are in different price groups that are going to be very successful in a market that's undersupplied on what people really need where the development hasn't been done. And so look at December here. And December is always a slow month. Um, look at what we had for, for the inventory here. So under 300, still a close race, under 250. So on the higher end homes, I think we can see that it's going to be more difficult. Um, but with the lowering of interest rates, it may spur people to buy. And also remember one thing. And that is some people have to buy when the market's a little bit up. You see, what they're doing is they've got commitments from the bank and they were approved to move on with their next property. If they think the market's going to drop, they have to take advantage of the prices now. You think, well, why would they do that? Well, if they've got, if they came in, let's say they came in with, uh, they bought a $400,000 home with 5% down, they put $20,000 down. And let's say that this year, their price of their home went up to let's just let's just exaggerate and say 450 they did some renovations so they see themselves as having 70,000 equity and if they think the market's going to drop they need the 70,000 equity to buy into their next house and to move up and if the market goes down they lose all their equity and they actually can't move up to the next best house that they want to buy so sometimes people make moves at times when you least expect so going into this 2015 market with not an extreme amount of listings, not an extreme amount of new uh, homes uh, coming on the market, uh, the only thing we could assume is, oh, okay, well, maybe a whole bunch of people will throw up their homes for sale in speculation because they want to sell them now while they can get their higher price. Well, unless they're going to move out of Calgary, I don't know how that's going to work out for them because they would have to be investors who want to sell before the price goes down. Having said that, I just don't see that happening. It didn't happen in the past, really. I can't see it happening now. You know, negative news often produces a negative result, especially if there's enough of it. If you feel strongly that you agree with this video, please share it and let other people know what's really happening in our local market.